Welcome back, everyone. You're probably already thinking about summer travel, and there are ways to do it on a budget, but you have to think ahead. Joining me now is Eric Palmer from Outlook Advisors. Nice to see you again here on the Morning Scramble. Great to be here. Thanks. So the best idea here is to just think far ahead, right? Exactly. You know, when it, when it comes to the vacation, the, the further ahead we can plan, the, the more time you're going to have to stash money away. And, and certainly at the end of the day, we want to make sure we're not putting ourselves in a debt to go on vacation. So the more we can save, the longer we can save, the better shape you're going to be in. So we have some stats and, of course, you have some tips. Uh, obviously, you're saying this needs to be a long-term plan. Eight in ten Americans actually dip into their savings for summer vacations. There are times when this is okay. Well, not necessarily. We, we don't recommend dipping into savings if you don't have to. You know, mm -hmm. uh, at Outlook Advisors, we're typically telling our clients to preserve your savings. That's most likely your retirement money. But if you have to dip in a little bit, I guess that's going to be okay. Make sure you're, you have a plan to replenish it. Make sure a little goes a long way. Exactly. So what would a plan be then if you're going to dip in? Like, do you have a certain amount that would be okay versus not okay? It really kind of depends on how much you have in your savings. If you only have $1,000, then you're going to probably dip into a larger percentage than you really really want to, but mm -hmm. if you have a decent savings account, we recommend paying attention to maybe 10% of that for the mm -hmm. money and then look for alternatives uh, such as points on credit cards and things that we'll talk about here in just a moment um, to supplement the rest of the cost for the vacation. Okay, so 22% of people earning less than 30000 a year say they would travel on debt. That doesn't sound to me like that's a good thing. It's not necessarily a good thing, and in, in a lot of cases, it puts them behind for four to even 12 months. And so if you're traveling on debt 100 percent, then you've created basically a large pile of money that you have to come up with in the next 12 to 14 months or before you can take another vacation to pay that debt back down. So quite often, we get back from vacation, we're relaxed, but we're in the hole. Right, and then the credit card bills come, and we're like, whoa, that what, wasn't so great, happened, was right? it? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay, so 13 percent of Americans plan more than four months to pay off. Why is this okay or not okay? Well, it, it's okay if you plan to pay off, and that's the biggest thing, but that percentage is very small. So what the, the, uh, the shocking part of that statistic is that the large percentage of people that aren't planning a payoff strategy, they're just kind of winging it. So if you go into credit card debt when you go on vacation and you don't really have a strategy to pay it off, you can still have that very same credit card debt when your vacation comes up a year from now, and it's going to be even harder for you to go on vacation in the future. And there are some people who actually try to take out multiple credit cards to get those points in advance, and that's not a smart thing, right? Not necessarily. You know, there's a right way to go about it, but if you open up multiple credit cards at the same time, it could actually damage your credit score. So we certainly don't want to recommend that you go crazy and look for every single credit card out there that has a lot of bonuses or a lot of opportunities for points. Um, but opening up one credit card that has a really solid points plan could benefit you if you do it the right way. And so you and I were talking, um, and we have a strategy where if we can pay it out of our checking account, if we know we have that money in there, we just put it on our credit card to get the money, or to get the points, I should say, but we already have the money. We know we have the money. Exactly. So first of all, shop for a credit card that doesn't take a whole lot to exercise the points. So for example, a lot of times you'll get a promotion that tells you you'll get 60,000 flight miles for signing up or hotel credits. But if you read the fine print, it tells you and three thousand dollars first before they'll activate those points and so number one when you're looking for a, a credit card that has a lot of value to it read the fine print and make sure that you don't have to spend a whole lot of money to actually take advantage of those points but secondly it you know start paying your bills with the credit card that you choose that that has these point options available so let's say you have a thousand dollars in fixed bills every single month right. instead of spending the money directly out of your checking account to pay those bills use that checking account money to pay your credit card off use the credit card to pay the bills so you accrue the extra points and values. So at the end of the day, you could turn $1,000 in expense into maybe $250 or even $300 in uh, future travel uh, rewards, whether it's through a hotel or some uh, flight rewards. Makes perfect sense. So obviously, the idea here is to budget. Do you have some special budget tips to maximize what you have? Yeah, there's a couple of different things you can do. So first of all, uh, decide how much your budget needs to be. So it's, it's where am I going to go on vacation? You know, Paris is very different than maybe taking a, a trip to another state. So decide where your location is going to be and come up with that, what that nest egg needs to look like. And then you work backward. If you have 12 months or 14 months to plan, set something fixed to go into your savings account. A lot of times with our checking accounts, we can set specific amounts and time it every two weeks or, or once a month to auto deposit into savings and if possible create a savings account just for the travel that's what uh, that way it's not mixed in with the rest of the mm -hmm. money that you're 
potentially saving for retirement. And it's smart also to over budget for that trip, right? Because you don't want to get to your destination and realize, oh goodness, I don't have enough money. It's always when we're in the zone, right? We're in the vacation yeah. mode and there's an extra excursion or you want to buy that shirt or that gift for your kids and that's when we've already hit our budget. So make sure you over budget. If you think you need $1,500, go with 2000 just in case uh, you have some overage or perhaps something happens. A lot of times we miss a flight, maybe you have to pick up an extra flight or the hotel gets booked. You never know what kind of emergency you might run into, so have some cushion there. It's definitely going to uh, make things a lot better for you in the long run. And one other way to save money is to really on some of those travel specials. I mean, you can find a lot of great deals on the internet, but you have to think ahead, right? Exactly. Um, Google's a great, great tool because you can actually set Google alerts. Tell it to, to give you an alert anytime a travel uh, opportunity comes up. Also, you can go to sites like Expedia or Travelocity and set alerts and it'll actually email you or ping you once they have a special online. So if you have the flexibility to decide when you want to go on vacation, a lot of times those special opportunities could tell you that in, in the several weeks coming up that the, the uh, cost could be a fraction of what it would be had you just booked it directly. Okay, great. Well, you've certainly got me in the mood to take a summer vacation. Thank right. you so much, Eric Palmer. Always good.